good morning or it's almost good afternoon and i'm late today with my video uh well and there's a reason for that and you'll find out why in a moment so what's up i'm joe bernstein i want to share with you about what's happening for me today i want to tell you about how i was literally afraid for my life this morning and how i transcended that fear and moved through the terrifying experience i'm telling you this because i come from a history of really deep anxiety very fear-based anxiety anxiety and understanding our perception of the world being so unsafe that i found all kinds of ways to numb my experience numb my emotions not take risks and as many of us know i ate and ate and ate and ate to soothe all my fears and concerns i played it safe by getting big and i was up to 340 pounds at one point in my life as my coping strategy for crippling anxiety so nowadays i work with a lot of great people creating a life that they really get excited about building strength in their relationships or building strength in their lack of relationship and the relationship with themselves or in their dating situations helping people shift a little bit in their careers and at the end of the day a lot of my clients are actually people who have a really good life they're successful dudes uh and on the inside they face a lot of anxiety they face a lot of negativity they face a lot of fear in fact, I have a new client I'm really excited about working with. He's, we're starting today, this afternoon, um, and he's a badass. He has like got his life together in so many ways, and he's cool and calm on the outside, but on the inside, he's constantly ruminating, constantly in fear. So that's where I come from. That's my default state. That's what I will go to when I'm not doing my, my actual work, my gratitude, my meditation, my exercise, sitting in men's circles, working with coaches, et cetera. Uh, when I'm not being courageous in conversations in my relationships, I will naturally go to a fear-based state. I'll go to a numb state and I'll go to a fear-based state. And anxiety can really get to me at times and I still manage it daily. So what I did this morning was felt like a culmination of years of transformative work. What's up, Josh? Or Zach, thanks. <laughs> Josh. What's up, Zach? Thanks for uh, giving the thumbs up, man. So anyway, what I, what I did this morning was a culmination in seconds of years of work. And it's the kind of work that I do with my clients. So essentially, here's what happens. Um, yesterday, let me back up. So I get insurance, obviously, through DC HealthLink. I live in Washington, DC. And so the DC HealthLink system is this website that's set up with Health and Human Services to process your um, to process your health insurance. Uh, and it's a royal clusterfuck. The website doesn't work a lot of the time. They give you instructions to upload things, but then there's no buttons to, or ways to upload content. When you try and call them, often you'll get transferred from one place to another to another, um, and you'll spend 90 minutes on hold. It's just a mess. In fact, in past years, I've just gone down to a clinic where they have people supporting enrollment, and I'm just like, look, I'm here for as long as it takes and we'll get this figured out. Well, this year I didn't do that. This year I just uh, was supposed to like naturally roll over my insurance and re-enroll and renew. So I get a text message from my insurance provider yesterday because I'm signed up for those wonderful text messages. Usually they're telling me about like yoga classes I can take or to call for information about benefits. But this text message was pretty fucking crazy. It literally showed up and said, you may not be covered right now call us ASAP. And it kind of blew my mind. Now, this is after business hours, which by the way, is really annoying. Like, give me such an alert after business hours. So it's after business hours. I try and call last night. I can't get through. And so meanwhile, this morning, I'm going to the gym and I'm cycling. And I'm cycling in the DC city streets. And it's pretty quiet in the morning, but this fear starts to creep up like, hey, dude, you actually don't know if you have health insurance in this moment. If something were to happen to you, you hit a pothole, you turn the corner too quickly, God forbid a car hits you, this could actually not just be a physical loss, but there's a potential here that you could be bankrupted by such a situation or not get great care because you don't have health coverage in this moment. So I didn't let the fear get to me too much, but then I went to, you know, I did some cardio, did, did some work on my, on, uh, my two, 2000 meter row, trying to get back to shape. I was in about a year ago on that one, I was doing Orange Theory. And I went to yoga class and this is a great class. And then I steamed a little bit and I'm feeling great. But during yoga class, during Shavasana, the last couple of minutes when you just lay there, as many of us know who do yoga, 
oh, the fear started getting crazy and it was rolling around. I was going, wait a second. I'm literally here in this moment, not having health coverage. What if something major goes wrong? Like, and hey, how the hell do I get home? Now it's the middle of rush hour. Like I'm going to be biking home through one of the busiest quarters, U Street and 16th um, in Washington, D.C. during rush hour, like 730 there's buses everywhere, there's cars everywhere, there's delivery trucks everywhere, there's potholes everywhere. I'm thinking, this is actually a clusterfuck. Like now I'm building this terror, this fear of actually getting home. And so I started to tell myself to relax. But the fear is, is, is coming up and it's big. And what's happened is with me, I've been spending years working on breaking free from what many of us are challenged with. Many of us, especially men, have been conditioned to be emotionally constipated. We do not process our emotions. We don't necessarily actively feel our emotions. We don't know what to do with them. We don't talk about them. So what we do is we compress our emotions. We stuff them down. And we act like we're people that don't have emotions, but then we're constantly in anxiety or we constantly get angry about little shit like the waiter not bringing the bread quick enough, you know, stuff like that, right? So we become emotionally constipated. Now, many people then start to do some inner work. They get into a men's group. They go to a therapist. They work with a coach. And, or they do get into spiritual community. And then something else happens. It's like they're emotionally liberated, but not fully liberated. Because men, they have this kind of emotional diarrhea. Which means they're feeling their emotions so intensely all the time. And they now feel so much freer that they just let their emotions run rampant. You know, it's like, I don't want to repress my emotions. I don't want to, in any way, shape, or form, uh, run from my emotions, doubt my emotions. But then, because we do live in a world where it's easy to build natural anxiety, their fears and their concerns and their stresses start to run rampant. And many times, by working on emotional liberation, by getting rid of the emotional constipation, then we're sitting there with emotional diarrhea. It's just spraying everywhere. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to stop it. We don't got no emodium, right? And so people teach us about mindfulness and stoicism which are tools to help us actually limit our experience of negative emotion. And so then we use that. But then we're still not really processing. We're not feeling the emotion. What's up, Jonathan? How you doing, man? So I work really hard on myself and with my clients to cultivate what I call emotional competence, which means I can feel the emotion. I don't repress the emotion. And I actually understand what the emotion means, what it indicates. I understand what I can do to actually process and transform through this experience. I understand the impact that it has on me in my default states and understand how to choose consciously how I want to respond. So here I am thinking like, this is fucked up. Now I got to get home. I'm in rush hour. I'm on my bike. This is crazy. I don't have health insurance. So the fears were ramping up and I'm thinking, what the hell do I do with it? Right? Well, it's not going to help me get health insurance <laughs> or be safer. If I'm in a fear state, in fact, I think cycling through Russia or in the city, if I'm in a deep fear state, that's actually much less safe than being calm and having all my emotional capacities, all my awareness, all my consciousness available to see oncoming potential real threats. So here's what I do when I'm in this state of anxiety or I'm in a state of deep fear. First things first, every emotion is often just a hormonal response in our body to a thought or a stimulus. The thoughts are things that become automatic. Our brain is designed to seek pattern. It's designed to be efficient. It's designed to keep us safe. So a lot of the thoughts that it generates are false evidence appearing real. Fear, the acronym for fear. So first thing is our emotions and our thoughts that accompany our emotions can often be a perception. At least the story we tell ourselves that align with our emotions our perception, not necessarily reality, but perception. So I first ask, is there really anything to be afraid of? First say, what's the likelihood that today is the day that something goes wrong while I'm biking home from the gym? Well, the likelihood's slim, but the chance is still there. Next, I go, okay, so fear is real. There's still an actual real chance. There, there's no evidence that I'm going to get hurt. But we got to figure this out. What am I going to do, right? So first things first, I go back to my understanding of emotion. I go back to my understanding of fear. Fear is the perception that something is coming to get me, that something bad is going to happen, that there's a real threat ahead of me. So what do we do when there's a real threat ahead of us? We do what we need to do to secure protection, and we come up with a plan for addressing it. 
So within a moment, I say to myself, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bike. I'm going to make sure my helmet's on tight. I'm going to bike slowly. Instead of going up this major road, I'm actually going to use the sidewalk, which I don't like to do. I'm going to be super aware. I'm going to stop at every stop sign, which I don't always do. I'm not going to cut across traffic. I'm basically going to act like I'm a pedestrian, but with a bicycle on the way home. So that's the first thing I can do is, is, is create the safest possibility for myself. Next thing I say, well, what am I going to do? The, well, as soon as I get home, I'm going to clear my calendar. Luckily, I didn't have any clients this morning. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to call my insurance company and figure out what sort of clerical error is going on. And so I'm going to get this resolved today. And meanwhile, I'll probably be on hold with them. So while I'm on hold with them, I'm going to do research for supplemental short-term insurance in case there is a real issue and I can't get my insurance renewed for several days or several weeks. So I got my plan ahead. I figure out how I can be a little bit safer. And then I, use my con then I use my mindfulness skills. Then I start to breathe more deeply. I make sure that I am scanning my body for awarenesses of emotions starting to come up. And then I'm literally just doing my best to take it slow, take it easy, and make it a safe ride home. In that moment, I notice I'm much more aware of what's happening and I'm much less tense. And when the fear starts to come back up, I stop myself and I tell myself, leaning into this fear, believing this fear is not gonna help you get home safely. Getting home safely means letting this fear subside and knowing that you have a plan and you cannot control what happens next. So that's how I transcended and I moved through the fear. And then, of course, you know, what happened was I got home, I got on the phone. It took an hour, uh, but I got the situation resolved and they'll have it all figured out in the next 24 hours. And I asked them and they said that I'm retroactively covered in case something were to happen today. So I did everything I could to remain safe and then address the potential threat that was real based in the concern. So if you are watching this, I want you to know that you have the same capacity. I used to be a guy that was afraid of everything. Something like that would have crippled me and had me terrified and I wouldn't have known what to do. In fact, you know, years ago, there's no way I would have been cycling on the streets in the city. That's all another story. So you can change and transcend and transform the way you relate to anxiety, stress, fear, anger, sadness, frustration. We can change our thoughts. We can change our emotions. We can change our way of being in this world. It takes work, but it's possible. And that's what I help people do. So I want to give you a simple tool, right? If you are experiencing a moment of stress, anxiety, or fear, which by the way, they're all the same. They're code words for fear, stress, tension, anxiety. That's all the words for fear. If you're experiencing it today, I want you to just stop. Ask yourself, is there a real threat? Is there a real threat here? And what is the real threat if it's real? And then simply decide, what is my course of action to secure protection against that threat? What is my course of action to secure protection against that threat? And I want you to try and repress it, and I want you to stuff it down. But I also don't want you to just like pretend it's not there. I also don't want you to just let the fear run rampant and run your life and control you and control your way of being and your behavior and your mind and your relationships. I want you to grab the reins through emotional confidence and take control. So again, just for today, when a fear comes up, a stress, a concern, a tension, a worry, I want you to simply ask, is this threat that I perceive real? And if it's real, what can I do? And how quickly can I do it to secure protection? I hope this is helpful. If it is, drop a comment below, share this with somebody, put an emoji in, whatever. Uh, anyway, that's what I got for you today. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.